The T-101 vertical wind tunnel is one of the largest in the world. Its width is 78 feet and the engine power here is 30 megawatts. You can tap out a whole life-size fighter plane in here. By the way, the concept of the wind tunnel was tested by the Wright brothers in the process of the Flyer 1 designing, and it almost hasn't changed since. The model is mounted on the scale that accurately measures the resulting buoyancy at different positions of the aircraft. These data are useful for aircraft design. Vertical wind tunnels allow determining how the vehicle behaves in supercritical flight modes. For example, like falling into a spin. This is also a mandatory part of the research. Besides the aerodynamics testing of new aircraft, scientists at SAGI study the structural toughness. This is especially important when it comes to new materials. There's decade-long, long-term statistics when it comes to aluminum, steel, or titanium that confirms their properties, confirms the effectiveness of these materials and the structure, which we don't have for composite materials yet. The main thing is to ensure the flight safety. We performed power tests and stiffness tests on sample models and full-scale structures for six years. That means that there was a large-scale test of the structure, and the research was conducted on materials to make sure that an aircraft with such wings would actually be safe. Static and endurance test benches are used to study the aircraft behavior throughout its entire life course. This is the static testing laboratory for full-scale structures, which can be used to test vehicles with a takeoff weight of up to 250 tons. The primary objective of the research is to find out what loads the airplane structure can withstand. And these data are very important because, in many ways, the future weight of the aircraft depends on them. The aircraft is loaded with the aid of hydraulic drives, and a system consisting of several thousand sensors detects the slightest deformations of the airliner structure. If the safety margin recorded exceeds the calculated safety margin, the structure can be simplified. And if it's vice versa, it'll have to be ruggedized, which means that the aircraft will also gain weight. This endurance testing lab simulates the flight loads. The whole bench comes into motion to simulate a takeoff. The half wings bend upward, and after the landing, they return to their original position. These tests can last for about a year. If the engineers design the plane to endure 10,000 flights, all of them will be modeled on this bench. But that's not all yet. At the end of the tests, the plane is literally destroyed in order to determine its fatal loads. Aluminum isn't called the winged metal for nothing. For more than 60 years, it has been the primary material used in aircraft construction. It's rather light, easy to process, and most importantly, it's well known. This aircraft and almost all others on this airfield are made of aluminum. Nevertheless, the era of winged metal, pretty much like the era of metal wings, is coming to an end. The properties of aluminum weren't flexible enough to develop breakthrough aerodynamic airfoils. After studying the configuration in vertical wind tunnels, we realized that it would be quite difficult to recreate a similar configuration using classic metals. This laboratory is used for cutting and laying out the layers of the future composite material. The main difference of the infusion technology is that it's not initially coated with a resin binder. In other words, it's dry carbon in finest threads that are formed into ribbons, bundled together by this thread. Up here is a laser projector, which projects a pattern used for the future cutting. So, it turns out that you're cutting along the edges of ready-made patterns and at specified angles. So, that can be, how many degrees is it? Here, that's five degrees. Five, so it can be zero, or say 45. And you cut it depending on these layers and then stack these layers. Yes. Is that right? We lay various layers out in succession according to the blueprint. The Aero Composite plant has mastered the production of a composite wing for the new MC-21 aircraft using the infusion technology. It's cheaper than the autoclave technique used by other aircraft manufacturers. 
Its fundamental difference is that the binding component that adheres to the dry carbon fibers enters the form part under vacuum in the infusion chamber. The autoclave technology works with a prepeg, and it's already coated with resin, which is why its working life has a distinct time limit. When making each composite part, a so-called secondary panel is produced. It is made from the same carbon fiber and has the same filler. Moreover, it undergoes the infusion process alongside with the primary part. In the end, we get kind of a clone. Then it is cut into 600 witness samples like this one, and they undergo dozens of tests in this laboratory to confirm that the main part complies with all the specifications stated by the engineers. We cut the samples that show us that the polymerization process has taken place. Right, since it's required, the required amount of coal should not exceed or be less than the amount of binder. So that's both physical and chemical testing. And then there are strength tests, which allow us to confirm the established characteristics required. But since each element of the structure, every part works under its own load conditions, the tests are different. We are conducting, well, around five types of mechanical tests on a component, usually. Maxim, there's a lot of sophisticated and quite complex equipment in your laboratory. What are you using it for? What are you checking? A wide range of tests is conducted in our lab, which are performed to confirm the power specifications of the finished products. Well, Maxim, but specifically, okay, this device here, what's it for? This is the caper used to inflict impact damage to standard samples with a certain force. So it's used to simulate perhaps a stone or bird impact. More like to determine the load the sample can withstand. Head on. Ah, so it's not, it's not that simple. No, of course not. Well, sure. So let's try it. The sample is 0.15 inches thick. It's the standard. I take it we don't need to go anywhere, right? We can stay here. I guess so, yes. Maxim, what is the power of the blow we're going to deliver on the sample? The impact force is 60 joules. So it's around 132 pounds dropped from a height of 3 feet. Something like that. Do you test all samples at the same impact force value? No, it depends on the objectives, the specifications of the samples. So if the plate is thicker, a bigger impact force may be used. Yes, it allows us to strike it with a higher hit energy. Uh-huh. Let's see if this plate can withstand a 60 joules blow. What's your assumption? We don't make assumptions. We run field tests. Let's see. Can I look? Of course. Well, there's a small dent on the front side and on the back. There's a few hundredths of an inch deep protrusion on this side. Maxim, if I were to run the same test but with the same aluminum plate, just curious. So, one more test. Aluminum plate. Impact force, 60 joules. Let's see. Just look at this plate. Let's put this into perspective. Composite material and aluminum. The difference is, well, this bump here is probably almost half an inch deep. Plus, there's a deep crack that completely rips through the metal. So in this test, the composite material turned out to be, well, significantly stronger. Provided that at the same dimensions, this plate is 1.5 times lighter than the aluminum one. 